this year, when Black Friday came and went, I realized that I finally have a thing, like the things that my mom and her friends and anyone older than me had when I was growing up. I finally have a thing that I can look at a kid and say, you have it so easy. <laughs> Back in my day, on Black Friday, you used to get your shit rocked. <laughs> We would duke it out in the aisles, <laughs> fighting like savages for a toaster <laughs> that you couldn't afford the rest of the year. All you have to do is go click, 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 and then the deals come to you. That's... Black Friday used to be an event. It was the closest that we've come as a country to the purge. You know what I mean? <laughs> Because when you think about it, like, okay, you are a Best Buy. You are a Best Buy somewhere in America. You know that you got 100 people camped outside from the night before to get these TVs. You know 300 more people are coming to get these TVs. You know you only have 12 TVs. <laughs> Why is there an inventory issue now? Jeremy, you are, this is the recipe for a riot. This is the exact equation. 100 plus 300 minus 12 is bricks. <laughs> How did you not plan better? And then you'll know, remember the footage. We'd see the footage from Black Friday all over the country. People just wailing. People. <laughs> people punching old people in the face. We were watching our society crumble. <laughs> and like, there, were ne there was never like a police presence. <laughs> the first year caught us all off guard, all right? <laughs> I don't even remember what year it was, maybe like, like 2006, whatever. First year that Black Friday came and it was like, well, it was, everyone started fighting and everybody charging through to get in and stuff like that. It took everybody by surprise, I get it. The next year, you should have prepared. <laughs> One day a year where we would just go absolutely batshit. You never saw anybody get arrested. <laughs> they're on the news. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like their face is on the news fighting, like, like fighting for the toy, right? And then like trying to hold on to a toy and they're getting their licks in, <laughs> in between gripping and readjusting their grip on the toy. I wonder, I wonder, if now, now that it's so easy, now that Black Friday is just this formality where you just, you know, click, click, get the deals sent right to your house. I wonder if anyone who engaged in the violence <laughs> is embarrassed. Do you know what I mean? Like, because think about it, because you couldn't have known what the future was going to bring. But if you had just been a little bit more patient and let the technology catch up to the demand, you wouldn't have had to rock so many nanas. You know what I mean? <laughs> And just telling that story makes me sound old because there are young people right now who will never understand what any of that was like, you know? So now I'm sitting here, I'm talking to my grandkids and I'm like, your Nana got curb stomped <laughs> for me to get a PS5 because she loved me, all right? <laughs> oh, it's absolutely insane. Black Friday used to be such an event. There was one year when I still lived in Louisiana that Day after Thanksgiving, me and some friends just went to the Walmart to watch. Because <laughs> we, we got there, we got there a little bit before they opened and there was already a line, a couple tents. I was like, this is going to be good, all right. <laughs> and then more people started showing up. We had no intention of going in, right? Just more people showing up, showing up, showing up. And I said, I, I had locked in on this one guy that was like doing stretches. <laughs> but he was doing the most inefficient stretches I've ever seen in my life. Cause he, he was trying to do the, the, like the hamstring stuff, but he was just popping it. He wasn't like holding it. He was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was like, he gonna get hurt. That's, that's the one's gonna go down first, right? And then sure enough, they opened the door and he got a stance going. He like, he's ready to get in there. And they open the doors, everybody rushes in. I don't know what he tripped on, but this man went down immediately. 
And then in the distance in the parking lot, all we could see is just every time somebody stepped on him, one shoe would go up. Like he would just, he was out here floating top, top to bottom. You could tell every time he got stepped on. I was like, I hope he's all right. <laughs> uh, it's been, been a while since I've, I've been here. It's been a little over a year since I've been in Arlington. And in that time, I've been through some things. Um, I, there's, no, there's, there's no good way to tell an establishment that you're in. And this is all over the country. There's no good way to tell, to tell them that the bathroom is out of toilet paper. <laughs> It don't matter if you speak to the manager, just someone on shift. There's no good way to say y'all are out of toilet paper that make you seem clean, all right? (laughs) Because you're just trying to help. But when you walk up and say y'all are out of toilet paper, when you make a definitive statement like that, you're saying some things without saying them. <laughs> and you're making people wonder something. You're making people ask questions about you as a person because then that means that either you didn't wipe <laughs> or you finished the toilet paper, which somehow still makes you seem nasty. Like... <laughs> Now, we all know that toilet paper is not this, like, like, infinite resource that just goes on and on in perpetuity for the end of time. We know that eventually the role will end, but if you the type of person that ends the role, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> that roles end when you go to the bathroom. Because when you think about it from, the, from, the, from, the, from their perspective, everybody else went to the bathroom and everything was fine. But then when you went and you came out, all of a sudden, we don't have any more toilet paper in the building. (laughs) Sounds like a you problem, right? (laughs) I'll be vulnerable for a second. I was at a Denny's. (laughs) I was at Denny's with some friends and I went to the bathroom and you never want you never want shit at a Denny's. That's never, that's never the plan. That's never, that's never something you're doing on purpose. You know what I mean? That's either an emergency or you're trying to make room. You know what I mean? Like there's... I didn't want to go to the bathroom, right? I thought I, thought I, could, I could go ahead, I could power through, but at in, in the end I was like, there's no way I'm, I'm hitting a grand slam with what I already got going on, so I don't want to waste food. Let me go ahead and go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom, and then I went to the bathroom, right? And I'm, I'm sitting there, and then I, and I, I went to reach for the... And I didn't feel any... It was just air. It was like just air where there's supposed to be toilet paper. And, like, and it's, such a, it's such a natural motion that you're not even looking when you reach. Because you, you know toilet paper is supposed to be there. Like, reaching for toilet paper that's not there is like... You know like when you pray and your prayer don't get answered? <laughs> and you're like, well, what is all this for? You know what I mean? Why do we have civilization? And so then I, so then I reach and I don't feel anything. So then, and I'm, I'm not even thinking about it right away because I'm on my phone. So then I just reach a little higher. So I'm like, I'm like reaching a little bit higher. I still don't feel anything. It's still nothing but air. And it's such an odd feeling when you go for something that you think is supposed to be there and then it's not. Like, you know, like when you, let's say you're on your phone or something, you're not really paying attention and you're walking up the steps and then you take that extra step, but then there's no extra step because you're at the top of the steps and then you go like... <laughs> And you didn't trip. You didn't trip. You did the opposite of trip. You're still upright, but you feel weird. You're like, oh, wow. That was... All right. That was odd. Okay. That's how it feels because I'm sitting there and I'm reaching and I'm reaching. And then finally I reach up and I, I feel... I feel raw roll. Like I feel, I feel the cardboard 
of the role. So, th- so then, and I, I don't know why I did this, but like I, st- I even flipped it <laughs> just in, just in case something would fall. So I flipped it. I even heard the like, duh, 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 duh. like it was, it was truly nothing. This is a raw roll now. There's nothing on it. It's bone dry, right? And I don't even know why I did that because it's just it was instinctual though. I was like, there's got to be something here. Life isn't this unfair, you know what I mean? And so I, and and you know, like when you walk into a room and you go to flick the light switch on and the lights don't come on. Now you know that if the lights don't come on, that the bulb is blown, but you will still sometimes turn it off and turn it on one more time just to be like maybe maybe i didn't give the light a chance you know what i mean like maybe let me go ahead flick it off flick it on because that was my fault i ran in here too quick the light didn't even know i was going in this room let me let me give the light a chance to act right you know what i mean and then flick it on flick it off and then when it doesn't come on the second time you're like oh the bulb is blown but sometimes you just do it to be like so i'm sitting there and now i'm panicking Cause what am I gonna do? What what what's what? What do we do now? Cause the last thing I'm gonna do is stand up, put my pants on, walk out there, and walk up to someone and say, "Y'all out of toilet paper." That's that would be insane. But I also can't live here. And so I'm sitting there panicking, truly panicking. I know I'm panicking because I'm sweating. I know I'm sweating because it's all over me. And I know it's all over me because I don't have anything to wipe it with. <laughs> I'm sitting there, paying, what am I going to do and everything? And then I see, I, I, the door opens, right? And this Denny's had one of those, like, two bathroom, like, stall, two urinal two sink setups, right? And so somebody walks in, and when they walk in, I'm, I'm looking... Under the, under the stall door a little bit, I see black shoes. And I'm like, okay, that's some hope. And then I look through the crack and they're washing their hands and I see a red shirt. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's a uniform. That's an employee. I'm saved. <laughs> but now I gotta get his attention <laughs> in the least upsetting way possible. <laughs> Because you don't want to just be a disembodied voice in the bathroom going, y'all out of toilet paper. <laughs> so, then, so then I'm in my mind, in my mind at the time, in my mind, in the moment, the only thing I could think to say was, help. <laughs> Which, as soon as I said, I was like, that's, that's not. Because now he don't know what tied it for help. Like, is this, am I stuck? It's like, what, what's, does he need an ambulance? Is this doctor help? And so I said, help. And he said, what? And I said, y'all are toilet paper. And he was like, oh, okay, all right, um, well, give, give me a second, um, I'll get you. Finish just washing his hands, walks out of the bathroom, and maybe forgot me. He never came back. <laughs> that man never came back, right? So now, now I'm sitting in here, and I'm, I'm devastated, right? Because <laughs> like, every second that goes by, I'm like, he's going to be back here any minute. You know what I mean? So I'm not even worried for the first whatever minute. Where, and I know you're thinking to yourself, Josh, Josh. Why is this story so long? <laughs> Why didn't you just text one of your friends at the table to tell them to tell someone, hey, y'all had toilet paper. I forgot to mention earlier, my phone been dead, all right? <laughs> my phone died when I was doing this. <laughs> and so then I'm sitting there waiting. I, 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 don't even, I don't even know how long. And then another person comes in, right? Once again, I see black shoes. Oh, look through the crack, red, you know, oh. 
doesn't even seem like the person before. They're washing their hands, right? Doesn't even seem like the person before. And I didn't yell help this time. I had learned my lesson. So I was just like, uh, excuse me. I, I know this is weird. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm very sorry. But y'all are out of toilet paper, and I've been in here quite a while. <laughs> Because I didn't want to seem indignant. This is not this person's fault. But still, I've been in here for a long time now. Like, this person didn't come back for help or anything. This is very upsetting. Y'all got that A rating outside. I could turn into a C real quick, okay? I just want to let him know I'm in dire straits out here. And, you know, he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And then he went, you know, and... Uh, left and then immediately came back and this is how I can tell you he was a hero right because on the other side of the stall I can hear him picking at the roll trying to get you know because you know like when you start a new roll how those first sheets glued <laughs> they like it, it's, 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 it's insane why do you have to waste nine sheets just to get the roll started we've been to the moon and we still have to rip up and throw away a bunch of sheets just get the first sheet that's usable, right? But then he ripping it up for me. I was like, this man's a saint, you know what I mean? And then we didn't know how he was going to get it to me because he can't just, like, lob it to me. Like, because this is heavy. This is industrial-sized toilet paper. He will knock me out <laughs> if this lands on my head. And so my man, <laughs> I don't know. It was weird between us just because we're dudes. Like, if this was a woman in this situation, all she would have to do is be like, girl, I have toilet paper. Be like, girl, I got you. And then, you know what I mean? But as, as men, we don't have a relationship like that. Like, if, you, if there's any chance you're about to see Dick, y'all better been to war together. <laughs> I'm not just seeing random penis. Even if you are my friend, we're not that close. Like, no. Right? I'm not doing anything where I have a chance of seeing your... No, I don't want to... So then, my man... Like, a tr like the hero he was, he bowled it to me. <laughs> Under the star, I could see the trail coming, and it was hope. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. And then I grabbed it, and I, I, I picked it. I was like, bro, thank you so much. I was, I was, I'm so thankful. He's like, no, you good, dog. I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. I was in here forever, right? Like, I was out here trying, dog. Like, thank you so much for, t for saving me. You saved me, right? And he's like, no, it's really okay. I was like, no, I just want you to understand how appreciative I am. And he was like, bro, are you still talking? Are you wiping? Like, are you still talking to me? <laughs> And I was like, I'm sorry, man. I've just really been here a long time. And I was like, I don't even know how long because my phone died and everything. I don't even think he heard that part because when I opened the door, he wasn't there. <laughs> but yeah, I've been through a lot. <laughs> uh, ever since uh, I was a kid and my voice changed, I've been told by people all over the country, uh, people of different ethnicities, backgrounds, I've been told by people that I have an incredibly white voice. That's what they say. <laughs> and people try to act like they can't hear it, but if I called and then showed up, you'd be surprised. Like, <laughs> you know, every time I, even my laugh is like, <laughs> like every time I laugh, someone somewhere gets audited. Like that's what <laughs> the auditing is. <laughs> You know, but I didn't realize how like white my voice sounded to people until I was in Louisiana where I grew up and uh, I was running for the bus. And the bus in Louisiana is not like the bus anywhere else because the bus in Louisiana comes once a year. It's a big deal. You need to make it knees to chest, okay? The stakes are high. I don't know if the bus stops. I've never been on it. But I was running so fast and so hard that I knocked down this old man. And I mean, I cleared him, okay? <laughs> Normally I'd feel bad, but it's the closest my little body's ever come to football. So I was pretty excited. I was like, he might be dead. Look at me go. <laughs> you know? But I did feel bad, so I let the bus go. I helped him up to his feet. It was this, it was this old black man, and, and I even realized that he was blind, so I saw his stick. So I grabbed his stick, I put his stick back in his hand, and I was like, sir, I'm so sorry. I hope you're not injured. You know, you came out of nowhere. Please forgive me. And then this old blind black man went, get your hands off me, honky! And I was like, sir. <laughs> sir.
sir, I'm black. I'm black like you. And he was like, nice track, cracker. Like there was nothing, there was nothing I could do. And I've never had to prove I was black for so I got mad, but then the matter I got, the whiter I sounded. Until the point where I was just standing from like, by golly, I'm black, gosh darn it. There's nothing I could do, it was terrible. <laughs> you know? I don't know, I don't know how to talk to people. Like it's a real thing. I just, I, like I have friends now, but the damage is done. Uh, <laughs> when I was a kid, I'd just sit in my room and read encyclopedias, which is not a kid you want to talk to, you know? <laughs> I was like, how's it going, sport? You want how many miles the earth is from the sun? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Get that away. You know what I mean? But now I'm used to being alone, so I'll just sit. I'll think about a thing. I'll sit and just be alone and thinking about the thing. But then when I talk to someone, they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. I'm not crazy. I was thinking about this all day. Like, I, <laughs> I ran through all the channels, all right? I'm not crazy, you're crazy, okay? I'm not, I can't be crazy. You need to check, you're, you're just finding out. I've been here, all right? Like the best example I can give is I don't get in heated arguments with people over like race or religion or politics or anything because all the stuff I care about is too dumb for anybody else to care about. Like no one, everyone is, you know what I mean? It's just me, you know what I mean? Just by myself. Like the best example I can give is when you go to the bathroom, and you wash your hands, and then you go to dry your hands, but there's no paper towels, there's just that air dryer. Where is the air coming from? <laughs> Where's the air coming from? That is bathroom air. That is, that is ass air, all right? You might as well fart your hands dry if you're gonna dry your hands like that. So then I leave the bathroom. I leave the bathroom with my hands wet, you know? So then I shake people's hands like, why are your hand wet? Cause I'm clean, okay? I'm not crazy, you're crazy, okay? I'm not crazy, you're crazy. Right? <laughs> you know? Because I, I would just sit alone and read and think and read more and then have nobody to talk to and then read and then finally talk to somebody and they're like, oh, God, what's happening? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, for instance, I read a lot of history books, you know, just sitting in my room, read a lot of world history, American history, Southern history, because I grew up in Louisiana, I just wanted to know. And one of the things I read that's always tripped me out, right, is that, like, after the Civil War, they let the slaves go. But the slaves still lived in the South. So you probably ran into your ex-slave like all the time. <laughs> Which has got to be the most awkward ex-run-in in history. Just like, oh my God, there he is. Don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. Hey! How are you doing? Are you mad? <laughs> like that's, what else? What's she gonna do? I actually, no lie guys, I, I straight up, I had a nightmare one time. I, I had a genuine nightmare that I was a slave, which wasn't even the worst part of the nightmare. The worst part is that I was the worst slave in human history. I was the worst, I was so bad. I was yelling at the slave and I was like, I'm not trying to start a revolution, I can't pick it up, all right? <laughs> No, I passed out from heat stroke twice today, okay? You can whip me if you want, but I'm anemic, so I will bleed out. And that's on you, okay? Oh, you're gonna kill me? Please kill me. Please kill me. I would love for you, to, this heat is what's killing me. I've had hay fever for two months. And then they moved me into the house, but they didn't teach me how to read, so I don't know any recipes. So the food is so bad that even the slaves are mad. Like, everyone is mad at me. And then I almost burned the house down trying to boil some water, you know? <laughs> to the point where Master comes up to me at the end of the dream, and he's like, look, uh, psh, look, I don't know what to do with you. You free, okay? Like, I can't. <laughs> I 
I woke up fired from being a slave. They have this thing that happens uh, in New York a lot. I don't know if it happens in L.A. as much, but people will get a rescue dog. And this always has always bothered me. They will get a rescue dog, and they'll tell everyone the rescue dog story in front of the dog. <laughs> it's right there. You tell it its whole embarrassing life story. It's right here. It can hear you. You know what I mean? They do it all the time. Like, oh, this is Fifi. She's a rescue. Uh, <laughs> a funny story. Found her under a bridge, raggedy. You know what I mean? Like, dusty, struggling. You know what I mean? Only three hairs on her little head, you know? I tried to feed her. She even know how to eat. I was trying to feed her. She was like, <laughs> she had no idea how to eat. And so I had to grab her little mouth. I had to chew the food. I had to put the food in her mouth. I had to make her little head chew. I'm a hero. I'm a hero is what I'm saying. I'm a hero. You know? I wonder if dogs do that to us. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder if dogs go to the park and see other dogs, and they're like, oh, yeah, look, that's Bill. He's a rescue. Uh... Michaela left him and he lost his job in the same week, so he really hadn't been doing anything, all right? I can't even watch my shows because he's at home all the time. It's absolute. Sometimes I will poop on the floor just to give him something to do that day. You know? And he'll try to act mad, but deep down he's like, thank you for giving me purpose. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. He's a rescue. I'm just trying to do my part, you know, help out. I, there's, a, there's a thing that always bothers me. I get, I get, I get uh, upset with people over how they use language just because it, it, if you use cliches, I feel like you don't care about this conversation. Like you're just using several things that have been said before. I think you're just making up things until I go away. That's, <laughs> that's what it feels like. Because people will use the cliches without thinking about what they mean, you know? Like, people will say things like, have you ever noticed when people say, call me old-fashioned, it's always for something good? <laughs> you know, people are like, call me old-fashioned, but you should hold the door open for the person behind you. Or like, call me old-fashioned, but the man should pay for the date. Bad things happen in old-fashioned, you know what I mean? <laughs> are you serious? No one's ever like, call me old-fashioned, but we need some slaves around here. We really do. Like, we really, there's no more overhead to pay, all right? If they can build the pyramids, they can make Subway sandwiches. I will not lose my franchise this year. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's insane. No one's ever like, call me old-fashioned, but I don't like when women voice their opinion. That just always, <laughs> it has always upset at me. <laughs> Feels gross. I don't like it. They're just throwing out ideas that I would have had if they had given me enough time to say it myself. <laughs> But then they're talking, and it's like, ugh. You know? The other one that I really hate, that really kills me, really upsets me, is don't judge a book by its cover. I get what you're trying to say. I get, I get what you're getting at. You know what I mean? Don't judge just on appearances. Don't, if there's more than what meets the eye. I get it. Right? But that's a bad analogy. When was the last time a book had the wrong cover? Like, when it, t t help me out. When have you been going to the bookstore to get a present for your niece? And you're like, I'll get Winnie the Pooh. She like Winnie the Pooh. And then you grab Winnie the Pooh. You just look at the cover. You don't read it. And so you grab Winnie the Pooh, and then you wrap it up, and then you give it to her. And then she unwraps it, and she's like, oh, Winnie the Pooh, I'm so excited. And then she turns the page past the cover, and it's mine comp. That's never happened. No one's going to a bookstore just putting different books on different covers. That's insane. Sometimes I'll be in New York on the subway. I'll be like, he's about to be crazy. I don't know what he's about to do, but he's about to be crazy. I can tell you that right now. I'm just looking at him. He's about to be crazy. You know what I mean? And the train will come and it will leave. And he won't get on or leave the station. He just pulls his pants down. I'm like, see, that book was wearing its cover. I'm trying to get my life together, so I've been watching a lot of Maury. Because <laughs> Maury, one of those shows where you feel like I don't have it together, 
I ain't doing anything myself. You watch a little more and you're like, I'm not doing that bad. That's, <laughs> actually, I'm doing pretty good now that I think about it. <laughs> It's wild. I don't think Maury gets enough credit. I really don't. Maury is such an ally to the black community. <laughs> he really is. In all the years he's been on the show, Maury has never fucked up a black name. <laughs> think about that shit. Over 20 years on the air, Don Twavius, mm, <laughs> says it like it's nothing. <laughs> mess up the name in my head, I'll be like, that's not even a word. That can't be a name. <laughs> Maury will just sit there unfazed. They'll put the baby on the screen. And you know, like, the show been on long enough that now, even in our DNA, we know we shouldn't be on Maury. <laughs> so even the baby look embarrassed to be on Maury. Like, even the baby, like... <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> And I'll see the screen below the name, and I'll be like, is that a two in that nigga's name? <laughs> and then Maury, without even missing a beat, will like, when it comes to the case of six-month-old Twain, I'm like, wow! <laughs> he said it with his full chest! No ums, no uhs! <laughs> wow! <laughs> That's incredible. I don't know if y'all heard, but Elon and Zuckerberg want to fight. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be the most unathletic fight of all time. That's, that, you can rest assured, no knuckles, just slaps. That whole fight. <laughs> that seemed, the two of them fights seem like the type of fight where somebody going to scream. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 like you hear the scum. Like, they never been bruised before, so they're like, why am I changing colors like this? <laughs> is this what poor people go through? This is crazy. <laughs> this is wild. I, I, don't, I don't know. I want to see them fight, but, like, I don't want to see them box or wrestle. They should only be able to fight if they use weapons. <laughs> like, I would, I would watch that. That'd be amazing. Just give them two swords and let them cook on each other, you know? <laughs> Wow. I'd love to see them fight, though. He, like, Zuckerberg looked like if you hit him hard enough, a screw will pop out his mouth. <laughs> like, <laughs> and Elon looked like if you, if you cut that man, it's going to be nothing but Elmer's glue and marshmallow cream coming out. That's, those two are the whitest people I've ever seen in my life. Have you seen those two on the beach? <laughs> it looks illegal. Like... <laughs> I don't know how I describe these two are so white it feels unfair to white people to call them white. That's <laughs> their color should be called colonizer. That's crazy <laughs> that they're both called white. I don't know. I think that they should fight. I just don't want to see them fighting MMA. I want to see them Yeah, fighting like a little tiny submersible thing. <laughs> And we'd be like, you got to go down. If you do it up here, it won't be fair. So, <laughs> yeah. Have y'all used threads yet? Okay, a couple woos. Right. I don't know. I'm, I, don't, I don't know how to feel about it. It seems okay. You know what I mean? It seems like what the old internet used to be. You remember that old, like, AOL text type? That's what it feels like. I just can't wait for threads to become a dating app. <laughs> Cause that's what happens. Like men are too horny and nasty not to turn everything into a dating app eventually. Anything with DMs becomes a dating app almost instantaneously. It's crazy. Men will turn Uber Eats into a dating app. We'll be like, we'll get the pizza delivered and be if she if she cute, you like, I got a whole pizza. If you want, you want to hang out for a little while. Like, dudes turn the phone into a dating app before dating apps. A lot of people don't know about it. So, in March 7th of 1876, Alexander Graham Bell was given the patent for the telephone. 
but they don't put it in the history books that on March 8th of 1876 was the first time somebody made a phone call and was like, what the fuck you wearing, bitch? <laughs> What color are those pantaloons? <laughs> oh, they're beige? Oh, you little trollop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what color? <laughs> oh, that's the thing, too. Like, it's popped in my head this week. Sometimes you just have memories of when you were little for no reason. I've been thinking about my life and thinking about growing up and stuff, and I just had this thing. From when I was a little kid, I went to the grocery store with my grandma, and this was not a good grocery store. This was, we didn't have it like that, so it was a discount grocery store, and it was pretty bad. Like, it was, it was one of the ones where you go in and the meat is $3, but then when you ask what type of meat it is, the butcher would be like, why are you asking all these questions, dog? Like, just... <laughs> take it or don't take it and there's a I don't know how to describe it but there's a weird thing that when you're in a bad situation but you're used to it, it just feels normal you know and so I was hanging out with my grandma we were walking just putting stuff in the cart and everything and then we heard an argument that turned into a fight on the other aisle right and it's loud and they're they're knocking stuff over off the shelves and stuff and they're screaming at each other and one of them's like you don't get out of my face I'll shoot you yeah like not, nothing you want to be a part of and I saw my grandma turning down to go down that aisle. And I'm six years old, but I'm like, Grandma, do we really need to? And she's like, I need the bread. They not fighting me, all right? <laughs> and the night before I went to the grocery store with my grandma, I was, I was at home and I was watching TV. And because we didn't have a ton of money growing up, cable was a luxury. And it was a luxury that my mom had to time. Because she wanted to give me what other kids had, but she just knew she couldn't really give it to me all the time. So we had to plan cable. So my mom, we would have it for three months, not have it for six, you know. My mom would sit me down and be like, all right, so you're going to see the beginning of the season of Friends. <laughs> but you're going to have to find out about Ross and Rachel from word of mouth, all right? <laughs> and so I remember this night was special because... Everyone had gone to bed without sending me to bed. So I'm six years old, and I'm just up late. Everybody's asleep. I got control of the remote. This is crazy. I'm about to watch whatever comes on late. This is wild. So I, I was flipping channels and stuff, and in my head, I'm like, if I don't keep it too loud, nobody will even know this. I can watch whatever I want. This is amazing. And when you're little, you're just excited for it to be late because you just never experienced late before. Like, like I was just running around like, 2 a.m., 2 a.m., 2 a.m., 2 a.m., 2 a.m., right? So I remember I was flipping channels and I landed on Night of the Living Dead. And I watched Night of the Living Dead at six years old, which is far too young for me because I don't even know about real life yet. So I don't know <laughs> if this stuff can happen or not. <laughs> Side note, I found out years later, back in the day when they were making horror movies, like the early, early horror movies, their prosthetics weren't that good. So if you got hired to be a zombie, you were just ugly. Like, that's... <laughs> this is a little history tidbit for you. Anyway, I'm watching it, and it's terrifying. This is crazy. I, I was like, I, this is a bad idea. I can see why they sent me to bed. Nothing good happens at 3 a.m. This is crazy. So I went to bed, and then, you know, Next day, wake up, go with my grandma to the grocery store. And as she's about to turn the aisle, we hear like a, a scream and a big loud thud and then silence. And I was like, Grandma, are you sure <laughs> that we want to turn this corner? Because he said, I'm going to shoot anybody in my face. And if we turn the corner, we're going to be in his face. <laughs> what if he misses the person he's aiming at? You know? He's like, boy, come on. And so then what we would find out later what was actually happening was there was a fight between two dudes in wheelchairs. <laughs> That's why it was such a ruckus and everything was getting knocked over because they get knocked over, but they got to roll back up. <laughs> Punch. <laughs> <laughs> and so the thud that we heard was the finishing move from the first guy because 
what he did, they had been scuffling and knocking stuff over with their chairs and everything. And then finally, he just grabbed that dude by the collar and threw him out his chair. <laughs> And so when we turn the corner, all we see is just a bunch of bread and rice on the ground. That dude done rolled off already. And so the only thing that I see coming at me is a dude with no legs crawling <laughs> like this. So I'm like, My, my grandma would grab me and pull me to the other aisle. She was like, boy, what is wrong with you? <laughs> that is an amputee. You need to have some damn compassion. <laughs> and I told her, I was like, grandma, I don't know what an amputee is, but that nigga is a zombie, all right? <laughs> Do y'all, do y'all ever worry? <laughs> That's the whole question. <laughs> like, my man, what do you worry about? Christ. Nothing really? You don't worry about any, damn, that's the whitest answer I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> that's crazy. That's why, ooh, you got? She worries Oh, she worries a lot. So she, she probably worried because you don't worry. She probably like, <laughs> This stupid motherfucker doesn't worry about shit. <laughs> she probably, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you worry about since you're the one with sense in the family? <laughs> Just everything? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> y'all are a great fit for each other. I'm glad that, glad that y'all found a real yin yang situation. <laughs> Nothing. I don't worry about anything. Why would you even admit that to somebody? That sounds like the whole crowd should jump you. It sounds like you, you got it like that. That's crazy. What about you? What do you worry about? Family. You worry about family? Yeah. yeah I worry about family too. It's fair. What, do you have a particular family member you worry about or you just worry about in general everybody yeah, being? Their well-being. Their well-being? Okay. I look far away. Oh, you live far, so you worry about. That's, what a sweet answer. Y'all are, jeez. Really pulling blood from a stone here. This is crazy. What do you worry about? Nothing. What do you worry about? Just uh, all of us, really. Just that they'll wake up happy and healthy. I, I worry, I'm just like you though. I worry about family, I worry about my, my cousin because he an idiot. <laughs> he is, my cousin, my cousin's wild. So my cousin joined a cult, right? I know, which is a big deal for that cult because they don't get a lot of us, you know what I mean? Like that's, they were so excited to have a black friend. That was crazy. They were, they were like, <laughs> And I remember somebody told me to join the cult, and so I went ahead and looked it up, you know, because I'm worried about my cousin. I want him to be all right. I look it up, and I could tell he was in danger because the website was trash. It was like, I was like, Comic Sans, he is in danger, all right? This is, this is terrible. They really crazy out here. That's wild. Broken Link 404 not found. Oh, Lord. They might have already did it, okay. <laughs> and so, basically, I, uh, <laughs> I, I went ahead and was talking to him. In my mind, the best thing to do was just go ahead and go to one of his meetings with him. Because the thing that cults do is that they create a shared language and a shared experience that no one outside the cult can actually understand or participate in unless they're in it. So then when you tell your friends and family about it, they look at you skeptical. They just don't understand because they weren't there, right? But if they come there with you, like if I show up with him and hear the dude preach and just turn to him like, nigga, like, <laughs> that might break it. And so I went there and it was, this, it was this weird house and everything. And I sat down and including me in the room, the whole cult congregation, 
was four people. And I was like, this is not a cult at all. Y'all just two idiots doing a guy favors. This is not, your cult can't even move a pool table. What are you doing? You done wasted my whole Saturday. You just call me when you in some real danger. All right, y'all were great. Thank you so much. Have y'all seen the Barbie movie yet? Yeah, okay, lie, yes or some no's. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm very excited to see it. Uh, mainly because of what it's doing to white women. This is crazy. <laughs> this is wild. What? What is happening? Like, I haven't seen it yet. I don't know what's happening in the movie, but white women are walking out militant as hell. This shit is Malcolm X for white women. This is fucking crazy. Dude. All of, all of my white female friends that walk out of the movie are like, maybe we should do something about the Supreme Court. <laughs> I'm like, jeez. <laughs> what is happening in the movie? <laughs> it is wild. This shit is like 300 for blondes that were in sororities. This is crazy. <laughs> they just walk out of the movie like, I wish a fucking man would try to give me directions right now. I wish. Ooh, I wish. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, god damn, that's wild. I, I used to be a, a very chill person. Nothing ever bothered me, nothing ever got to me, everything rolled off my shoulder. Turns out I was just 17, I should have been chill. This, I wasn't paying any rent yet or anything. Now I'm in the real world, I'm very upset. This is, this is horrible. And it sucks because when you're at every stage of your life, you feel stress. Every, every part of your life you felt stress, but as a kid, you think you know stress. Like you're sure that you know real stress as a little kid. Most stressed out person I ever met in my entire life was in elementary school. We were both six, and this is the most stressed out. To, to date, I've never met anybody like this. This kid was walking around like he had a full pinch and he was about to lose. Like he... <laughs> He would crush his juice boxes when he got done with just so much like, ugh. Like he had a mortgage. <laughs> it was crazy. I'll never forget this. There was one time, I went to a Montessori school, so we, we got nap time a little longer than other kids. <laughs> and I remember we were both six years old, laying there. It was nap time, and nap time was the only time the teachers got a real break from us, but they needed all of us to be asleep, and he was just eyes wide, looking at the, <laughs> looking at the ceiling, you know, thinking about an annuity or something. Just like, <laughs> and sure enough, teacher walks up to him very sweetly. I remember, because I was laying next to him. She's like, is there, is there anything I can get you? Or like, do you need an extra pillow or something? And like, I wasn't asleep, but I was dozing. You know, there wasn't anything on my six-year-old mind. I was chilling. You know? But what he said woke me right up. This, it was the wildest. So she's like, do you need anything? Is there anything I can get you? And he turns to her and said, naps don't help when your soul is tired. I was like, Whoa! What have you been through? What's happening right now? Oh, it's terrifying. It was crazy. I, w I went to um, <laughs> went to college for design, and it's funny how when you're graduating college, it, right at the end is when they tell you you could have not done any of this. It's like the dean is ha like shaking your hand and handing your diploma and whispering in your ear. It's like, you didn't have to. <laughs> and I remember I was just looking for any job that I could get out of college and I started working at a grocery store. And I told them that I majored in design and they were like, oh, you can design how we put up the grapes. <laughs> And the grocery store that I worked at, I was in Chicago at the time, and it was a horrible neighborhood. It was, it was very bad. This was like an epically bad neighborhood. We had so many different characters, because we had, there was a clinic at, at one end, like it was like a methadone clinic, so a lot of people that were on or trying to get off drugs would just be around the store. And then there was also uh, a mental facility. So the people who got the mental facility but didn't have anywhere to go 
would just hang out at the grocery store. So I was constantly in danger. <laughs> I got used to it. And I remember we had this guy, he was a pigeon man. And my man, I don't know if he was homeless or not, but all I know is he filled the parking lot with pigeons. Pigeons love this dude so much. This nigga was usher for pigeons. I remember one time there was this guy walking into the store that I don't know exactly what he said because I was putting up the cart, so I overheard something rude being said, but I don't know exactly what it was. But he was like, you know, why don't you get a job, you piece of shit? Like, said, said something that was way too mean to just be passing somebody to walk in a grocery store. It was wild. Pigeon man didn't do anything, just stood there, chill. Got a couple pigeons here, a couple pigeons here. Just <laughs> let it go. Rolled her after shoulder. And then, then the guy's walking out of the store. And this is going to make me sound crazy. I'm just telling you what I saw. All right? Basically, that guy walked past Pigeon Man with his cart full of groceries. And then Pigeon Man looked at one of the pigeons and went, and then, and then the pigeon flew into the back of that dude's head. And I like, I'm not saying this man talks to pigeons. I'm just saying he did that and then the bird did that. That's all. I'm just relaying information. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. I'm just, he, he went, and then the pigeon kamikaze the back of that dude's head. Almost knocked that man out. It was crazy. And then that's the other thing, too, is that there were so many characters that worked there, but then nobody warned me. So I just started working there. But when you work in a bad neighborhood, they don't make the people that come and frequent the store part of the training. They should do that. They should be like, all right, look, on Wednesday, there's going to be a nigga in a dress. He's going he gonna to walk in. He's going to start fighting everybody, all right? So you just want to take cover, right? They don't do any of that. They're just like, all right, and then this is how you fill out your time sheet. Like, they act like it's a normal place. It was not a normal place. And so, so then there was one day where this dude, <laughs> this dude came in, walked in very casually, stopped right after the sliding doors, took off his shirt, took off his pants, and went, I'm going to fuck everybody. <laughs> And then everyone started leaving the store. Everyone casually started filing out like it was time to go. No one protested. No one, no one even stood to see if he meant it. Everyone was just like, all right, should have got here earlier. <laughs> everyone was like, I was ringing up a woman in my line. And this old, like, 80-year-old woman, I'm not even quoting her. She was like, fuck those grapes, not getting fucked today. And just keeps walking out. It was insane. Because then, then, this is the worst part, too. They never had good security guards there. So then the man screams, right? And apparently he just does this. That's, that's what, he does it so much that customers were like, this is when we have to leave. This is not, the bread's not worth it. It's fine, you know what I mean? And then, the, all right. So they, I don't know the name of it, so I can't put them on blast or anything, but like they used this security guard service that was the worst security guard service I've ever seen in my life. I don't know where they were getting these security guards. Because these people, not only were they not trained to like, they, they didn't like secretly know Krav Maga or something like that, they also weren't big. So then, <laughs> this man rolls in, he's like, I'm a fuck! Everybody. And then everyone starts leaving. And then the security guard, who I hadn't even noticed that day until this moment, because then I started scanning the grocery store for him. Security guard, I see him in the corner of my eye. He's walking towards me, and he's over here <laughs> hobbling towards me. My man is 76 years old with a bad knee and just like, I think a metal ankle. I don't know what was going on with his legs. And he walk over and whisper in my ear, he's like, can you say something to him? <laughs> I was like, Can I say something? <laughs> I was like, can I say something? I just repeated it back until he answered something. I was like, can I say something to him? Can I say something to him? Like, can I say that? And finally, he's like, look, young blood, I asked them to give me a gun, and they said no. <laughs> they know I can't fight. I would have cleared all this out if I had my pistol with me. And then we just started, like, because the, the dude is just walking throughout the store in his underwear. And so we're just conversing about what to do. We're literally like, well, I'm not, look, they pay me to put up the grapes. Like, I, 
I'm not really here for all this other stuff. And then, and then he's like, gen- he, this man is genuinely floating with me. He's like, you think I only live 12 minute walk away? Should I go get my gun? Like, and then we can just look. I can go get my gun. We can act like you found it, right? And I was like, don't. No, why would I find your gun that's at your house? And, he, and then, then my man said, it, he said it was a 12-minute walk, but he's like, but you know I walk a little slow, so you're going to hold, you're gonna have to hold him down for about half an hour because, you know, with this leg, you know, it's been troubling me. It's, you know, it's been raining and shit, so I can't, I can't move like I used to. So then I'm going to go home. I'm going to get the gun. And I was like, it takes you 30 minutes to do a 12-minute walk? He's like... Yeah, so it's going to be an hour. Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be quite a while before I can cut. But as soon as I pop him, I bet he'll never be back here again. I was like, are you even a good shot? Like, is, like, at a certain point, you start considering it. My man is just, like, walking down the aisles. There's no customers in the store. He left, but he never came back. Like, I don't know. I don't know what happened to him. I think he quit. I do. I think he quit when he got home. I think he hobbled home, and then he was like, nah. (laughs) You all were great. Thank you so much. Keep it going. Keep it going. Josh Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. I've I've been worried about getting, getting older and everything and, like, where... Where I'm at in life or where I should be based on age and stuff. You know, you always do those comparisons with your peers or just with people, with history, all that stuff. And I'm, and I think I'm, I think I'm especially freaking out because I don't know what type of old man I'm gonna be because I don't think you get to choose. (laughs) You know what I mean? I don't think a lot of old men want to be the old men that they are. And it feels like there are some very specific lanes you can go down. You could be a creepy old man. You could be an angry old man. You could be a sweet old man. You could just have dementia. You know what I mean? Like, they're just... It feels like there's only four ways you can go. And I'm scared I'm going to be an angry old man, you know? That's why I try to live my life... I try to be present so that I I won't look back and wish anything or have regrets or get bitter or anything like that because I'm already starting to get angry old man tendencies because I like already I I already hate kids but not kids in general I got beef with specific kids like an old man would like I got like it's like it's like four kids where I'm like ooh Cause there's nothing you could do, so I just hope something bad happens. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's just four of them, so it's not kids at large. It's just I'll tell you about one of them. <laughs> I was walking down the street, walking to the train, and there was this little girl, Girl Scout, selling cookies. All right, and we got into it. Okay. <laughs> no, no, you need to be on my side. Hear me out. So I, I'm walking down the street, and then this Girl Scout is like, cookies, cookie, cookie. Like, she just working her corner, I guess. <laughs> and like, cookies, cookies. And then she sees me. I'm trying to avoid eye contact. I don't want to have anything to do with this right now. I'm trying to keep a good diet and everything. So I'm trying to stare straight ahead. And then she's like, would you want some cookies? And like, leaned into my field of vision. <laughs> Like, would you like some cookies? And I was like, oh, no, I'm okay, but thank you. Have a good day, right? I said all that. I didn't even say any of that. I could have just kept walking. I could have acted like I didn't hear her, right? But then she goes, as I'm about to pass her, she right here, right? And then as I'm past her, she goes, it's okay if you're broke. <laughs> what? <laughs> Duh, like, who talks like that? That, that, that that's insane. That's so crazy. And so I, I stopped, and I shouldn't have stopped, but I stopped. And I was like, what did you say? And she was like, it's okay if you're bro. She said it louder the second time. And I was like, where is the, an adult? Where, like, you just, this is crazy. But now what do you do? Because I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm the grown man. 
there's nothing that I can do, you know? I can't just be out here yelling. I can't be a grown black man out here yelling at a child holding cookies. Fox would have a fucking field day if there's a picture of me yelling and she's holding the cookies up. So I hit her with everything I could. I was like, Santa ain't real. Too fairy not real. And she just stone cold stared me in my face. It was like, and you don't have any real money. <laughs> it's like, what do you do? What, what do you do? There's nothing that you could do in this moment. So I was just, I, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna pray. <laughs> I'm gonna go home and pray that you stay the same size your whole life. <laughs> That's all I can do. <laughs> there was a time in my life where um, I don't know why. Maybe it was like a keeping up with the Joneses thing or something, but I wanted, I wanted AirPods so badly. I don't even know why I wanted them. They're not better than the corded. It's all hype. But I wanted them, but I, I didn't feel like I could afford them. I felt like it'd be too much to spend on some AirPods, right? So I didn't, I just shut down those desires, I saved up my money. I was like, I'm gonna spend my money on something that's not gonna pass away. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that I spend my money on something that's gonna give me a lot of joy. So I spent it on a trip to Mexico, right? And while I was in Mexico, I saw a knockoff pair of AirPods <laughs> that were so cheap, but they, were, they weren't just cheap by like the exchange rate. They were cheap in pesos. They were so cheap, I thought they might be toys, but I was like, let me roll the dice, because <laughs> I have money to blow now, right? And I bought them, I brought them home, and these had to be the biggest AirPods I've ever seen in my entire life. They were so big, they hurt to put in my ear. They genuinely stretched my ear a little bit, because they, I had to shove them in. And you know how the AirPods supposed to come like here, just under your ear? These came down, like these, these were wild, and so I turned it on, and the way you turned them on was each side had a button. That's how big they were, that they had buttons on them, all right? You had to press each button at the same time to turn them on, and when you press the button, it didn't even make a technology noise. It wasn't like, it was just like, like just immediately in your ear, and I don't know if this is related, but as soon as I turned them on, my balls hurt so bad which doesn't even make sense. I was like, how are these connected at all? What waves are being sent through my body right now? Because I, I went like, eh, and I was like, ugh, like immediately. And I had them in for a little while, and while I had them in, my mom gave me a call, and I answered, because you just had to hit the button to answer, and honestly, everyone that called me while I was wearing my, my bum AirPods, they sounded behind me. It was the most... It was, it was the most unsettling, like, I answered the phone, I was like, hey, mom, and she's like, hey, how you doing? I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> I tried, I tried for two weeks to wear them, you know, because I was like, if I go ahead and wear them every day, they won't hurt as much anymore, and everything, and then finally, I gave it up. I was like, these are not worth it. I put them back in the box, I put them in the closet, and I saved up my money, and I just went ahead and bought some regular AirPods, right? But my ear's like a little too loose now <laughs> for the standard air. Like my right got tight again, but my left, like my ear ussy is like not snapping back at all. It's like, it, and then if I even yawn, they fall out. Like it's just, it's hanging on by a thread. <laughs> uh, I got to hang out with uh, one of my older relatives and it, it's really important to me to hang out with people that are older than me because they really do show us the way you know what I mean they haven't lived perfectly most of the things they say are going to be imperfect but it you know I feel like life is like a 
It's like a dark house, right? And older people, they start walking through the house before we did. So sometimes we're trying to find our own way and we hear them calling out in front of us. Hey, watch it. There's a door right there. Hey, don't hit your shin on that. You know what I mean? But then every once in a while, they'll let you walk all the way out of a window and be like, my bad. I didn't, I didn't see that one coming. That was, that's on me. All right. Back, back in my day, we would fall out that window and we would just get back in the house. We wouldn't complain about it. But I, yeah, we were, we were talking and I realized something. Another thing that I worry about, getting to be an old man. When that day comes, I know a few things that are going to bother me. Every time we would go somewhere, he would get so mad if I made him use his knees. <laughs> we would get somewhere and he was like, you didn't tell me they had all them steps. And I was like, what do, but what, <laughs> would you have prepared or something? He's like, yeah, I would have got my head right for all these steps. <laughs> now nah, I just got to do steps, unprepared. I didn't get to count them out. I didn't get to look at the image, see how many steps it would be or anything. You just want me to go up these steps raw. And I was like, what <laughs> do you mean raw? <laughs> I feel like enough time has passed that we can talk about it without it being weird. So, I did a lot of protesting in 2020. There was very little else to do. <laughs> and all the protests that I happened to go to were peaceful. And there were plenty of peaceful ones. There were peaceful ones all across the state, country, world, peaceful. But enough time has passed that we can admit there were some that weren't. There was a couple times I was watching the news. I was like, nah, Target didn't do anything. <laughs> wow, what was in there? Yeah. And I was having this conversation with a friend and he told me that he also went to a protest and he admitted to me that when this protest just happened, it, it was like out of nowhere. He, at one point he was like protesting with the people and then he saw people starting to run and then everybody was running and then somebody threw something and then it just, it was a riot. It was like a riot around him. And he admitted to me that when it turned into a riot that he, he looted, right? And it's weird cause you're never on the phone with a looter. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you always see them on TV. They like stock footage and stuff like that. You never like having a conversation. Because he told me, I was like, why the fuck are you telling this on my phone? What are you doing right now? What's wrong with you? And I was so torn about it. You know what I mean? Because a part of me, I, I, he, all he looted was a rabbit. <laughs> nah, I'll explain. <laughs> Basically, this shit kicked off into a riot, and then this man ran into a PetSmart, I'm pretty sure was open. <laughs> Grabbed a rabbit and ran out. <laughs> and I was so torn about it, because a part of me was like, why would you loot? What's wrong with you? That's not the point. And then another part of me was like, you couldn't grab someone with some street value or something like that? That's crazy. Because he didn't get a good rabbit. <laughs> this rabbit been sick since he got it, all right? He been in and out of the vet three years off this rabbit. This man lured himself $7,000 into rabbit medical debt. It was absolutely crazy. Look, Chicago, y'all been too good. Thank you so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate you.